so let's just start off with a review of optics. That's actually something that um, most of people will need the most to review of. It was, you know, uh, more than 13, 14 weeks ago when we covered the earliest part of optics. So even the ones that um, you really should know as a general knowledge, now um, you, um, you know, you should do. make sure that you actually know it as a matter of general knowledge. So, um, so there are some background materials that you ought to know, and um, a lot of them are actually covered in chapter one. Um, so there's some background stuff, and I guess I'll just uh, leave it there, other than the note that it is in chapter one. It has to do with, um, so in chapter one, it actually starts out, um, it tells you everything that's in optics. It tells you about index of refraction. I think that's covered in chapter one, right? Maybe. <laughs> Definitely by chapter two, but let's just double check. Chapter one covers, yeah, reflection. With, yeah, index of refraction. So, so it covers background material like index of refraction, speed of light divided by, no. <laughs> C divided by speed of light, because it's always greater than one. C divided by speed of light. Um, it covers things like a color theory, the connection between wavelength and um, color, um, color, where it comes from. It covers things like uh, Huygens principle, sort of um, how you treat the wave aspect of it. Um, I, I think these are the two biggest things. Uh, index of refraction, uh, which you, you'll be seeing a lot more, the rest of geometric optics, and actually some of physical optics, and um, how different wave aspect of light is associated with the things you actually see, things you notice right away. So color is the big one. And uh, the chapter one covers other stuff, but so this is where um, the fact that your final exam is only two hours long kind of helps you. For example, um, so there's the stuff about this portion. Oh, I almost forgot about polarization. Um, so I can tell you right now that this portion is a topic that's uh, tangential enough that I can't really you know, do much with. Um, so you should know what this portion means. And you remember what this portion means? It means where, so this portion, the phrase, refers to when the index of refraction is a function of the wavelength or the frequency of light. Even though we treat it as constants, it's technically not. That's how prism works. The glass, um, it doesn't have index of refraction of 1.5. It's a range of 1.48 through 1.5, whatever, uh, depending on the wavelength. <laughs> so it's a, but you know, once again, you should know what this version stands for, but that's sort of where we are gonna leave it. Polarization, I probably should write it down, because even though I probably won't give you any detailed questions, but you should, at a minimum, know the thing called Malus's law. But that's kind of where it stops. Um, I would expect you to know kind of distinction between unpolarized light, polarized light, and especially as it relates to quantum mechanics, um, there's some connection between uh, polarization of light and the photon spin. Um, so there's something that to, to know at the uh, qualitative level, but um, the fact that your final exam is only two hours long means I am severely limited in the level of details I can ask. So the things we just mentioned about dispersion and polarization, at most you're gonna see it in multiple choice, because that's where I have 40 questions instead of only three questions relating, so yeah. Um, so this is sort of the backward, what I call background stuff. I guess Malus's law technically isn't background stuff, but um, <laughs> I want to emphasize the color. So this is the kind of stuff that um, actually I put on my physics 10 exams. Um, like, you know, red light has longer wavelength, blue light has shorter wavelength, and that's the stuff that you ought to know. So um, where it's more of an actual engineering physics where 
Um, it's not just the qualitative uh, kind of knowing the facts kind of thing. Is uh, start through the chapter two, geometric optics. So under geometric optics, the so since we are doing a review, let me start out with what's uh, most important, and then I will kind of mention the other stuff that you would should review. So any guesses what the one most uh, important stuff in geometric optics is? Thin lens equation. Thin lens equation, yes, yeah. That's the one formula you should know forwards and backwards. So it says one over object distance is plus one over image distance is equal to one over focal length. And I keep telling people that this equation contains more information than it appears. And it's because there's a lot of other things that are tied to this that you ought to know. The single biggest one is the sign convention. How different signs of the focal length, image, and object distance are associated with different physical setups. Because this is the one equation that you use for everything. Converging, diverging, um, virtual image, real image, and uh, real object and virtual object. So all those different possibilities um, um, are covered with this, this single equation, provided that you use the correct sign convention. And, um, and this e equation also applies to mirrors. But um, I will repeat what I said for exam one, that I won't really give you mirror questions. If I do give you mirror questions, it will be a very simple arrangement. It's because, um, um, so the way I would solve mirror question is always fold it back out to an equivalent lens setup. <laughs> and sometimes when you do that with uh, like multiple lens and mirrors, the setup gets way too complicated. I won't give you those, uh, I am aware of my time limit and I want to save time for quantum mechanics, special, the interesting modern physics. So, um, so you have the thin lens equation, um, the most important thing tied to the design convention, um, and really the kind, so you know, just had mem um, having memorized this um, won't really do you much good. You can write down the equation, it'll give you two out of five points <laughs> in the part where it was needed, but it won't really get you where you want to be. So um, really what I want to remind you of is the um, examples of optical arrangement. And that's the forward and backward part. You should know what was involved in solving for it. You should be able to draw a ray diagram, even though I probably won't require you to do it. But you know, it's helpful to kind of have an idea. So if you have a single lens setup, I gave you three examples in class as a kind of archetypal examples. The quote unquote standard setup is the one with the converging lens and a uh, real object that's a farther than focal length away so that it'll form a real image. I call this the standard setup because with this setup, um, oops, not drawing this right. Because with this setup, um, everything is positive. Object distance positive, image distance is positive, focal length is negative. And the things that make it interesting are the situations where um, each of these have been turned negative. So for example, you can make the only the image distance negative by bringing this object closer. Then you get a situation that looks like with a converging lens and object somewhere in here. Then when you apply this equation or do the ray tracing, then what you'll get is diverges here. So you have to kind of uh, retract it back to find the image here. That's a virtual image. If you do the algebra, you'll get a negative answer here. And the other, one more, the third example I gave you was with a diverging lens, which I won't draw here, which makes the focal length negative. Um, that also makes the image distance negative. Um, and really the situation that you ought to know how to handle is, um, once again, this comes with the caveat that I haven't written the exam yet. I haven't 
firmly decided on what I'm going to test. But one thing that I really want everyone to be able to do after having completed this class, and I want you to be able to do this five years from now, so it's not something you merely memorize now and forget later, is you should know how to handle two lens arrangement. So if we are given some kind of arrangement, it can be any, essentially any arbitrary arrangement. Maybe it's a first diverging lens and then converging lens, or it's swapped around or whatever. Um, but so that's uh, what I want everyone to be able to handle because really once you know how to do the single lens, then this is just a, um, this doesn't involve anything new other than the principle that you go through each lens one at a time. Uh, going through this lens, you figure out the location of your virtual image. So going through this lens, your uh, virtual image forms here. This is my virtual image. And this virtual or image of the first lens acts as the object for the next lens. And while you do that, you now ignore this. So it acts as the object for the next lens. So uh, this is kind of what it looks like. And this is your final object. And um, this uh, two lens setup is, uh, I feel it's the most interesting one because it gives you a lot of different possibilities. In fact, a possibility where the object distance is negative, you have virtual object, that's only possible once you have two lenses. Because that's the only case where you can place the image of the first lens beyond the second lens, so that it becomes an object with a negative distance. And even though I will never ask you, um, require you to draw a ray diagram for it, you should know how to work through it using the thin lens. Um, yeah, and two, two is enough. I won't really ever give you a three lens setup because it takes way too long. And that's uh, th me avoiding three lens setup is why I won't give you the mirror um, version for the more complicated case because there sometimes uh, what starts out with only two elements ends up being three, four elements by the time you're done unfolding it. Um, but so hopefully this is all reminding you of stuff that you did earlier in the semester. And if, uh, you know, it's not, reminding you sufficiently, then you should go back, review, make sure um, for those uh, fixed examples you know how to do. Um, so that's the biggest thing in geometric optics. And having talked about that biggest thing, there are some other smaller topics that we ought to pick up. Like um, there's a, like a refraction on, the, on a curved surface, right? Remember, this semester, I also tried to drive it and then I messed it up, right? Yeah, first semester I messed up worse than this semester. But refraction on curved surface, or this is like ref, um, image formation by refraction on a spherical surface or something like that. So you don't have to know how to drive it, but you should have the formula in your um, formula sheet so that in case a question comes up on that, probably a multiple choice question, um, you have a formula handy. Um, let's see, what else in geometric optics? I feel like I missed. Oh, oh um, and it kind of comes um, as a, result of this, and while I wouldn't have you memorize things relating to this, um, as a part of knowing how to analyze multi-lens arrangement, you should know how to deal with telescopes and microscopes. Especially for telescope, there are some simple formulas uh, that will be helpful. Uh, like angular magnification of telescope is given by simple ratio of the two focal lengths. The object, uh, um, objective lens focal length divided by the eyepiece focal length. Um, but um, So a microscope magnification formula is more complicated. I wouldn't test you on it. But you should be able to analyze it. You should be able to kind of go through calculation here, which is essentially microscope. And that actually reminds me of two more things. The concept of magnification. Um, so magnification is something that you can be asked for. So when someone talks about magnification, there are really two types. If you just see the word magnification, what you ought to be thinking about is the linear or lateral magnification. That's uh, how much is the length of something changing 
changing. It's just the ratio of the, um, or it's defined as the ratio of the image height over the object height, but through some geometry, you can express it in terms of this. Um, my minus of the image distance over object distance. Hopefully that sounds familiar. And uh, especially as we talk about telescopes and microscopes and you know, simple magnifier, uh, which is a single lens setup, there's the idea of angular magnification. That's uh, something else you ought to know. You will probably be tested on this on multiple choice. Because with a sim simple lens, it's really easy for me to write a question that says, that asks for, you know, what is the magnification using this focal length with the relaxed eye? Um, so with the angular magnification, there are a couple, um, there are several versions of the formulas, relaxed, strained. Um, I guess I can put this much. I will never really ask you, if, well, can I say this? Mm, yeah, I, I, so this is part of the, your final exam being short or not, not me not having enough time. Uh, I will never ask you the, about the, ask you questions that require formulas for strained eye. I will always ask about relaxed eye. It's really a question of when you are asking about stra uh, strained eye, um, we are talking about image that's placed at the near point, and that near point is not actually constant. Your textbook uses 25 centimeters, but you know from your own experiment that that's way too long for most people your age at least. It's like once, you, so even for me, it's not 25 centimeters yet. So maybe when I get to be 40, 50, it'll become 25 centimeters. But um, so anyway, so, so I will always be asking about relaxed eye, which means you are placing the image at infinity distance away, and that's kind of a uniform reference for everyone. Yeah. Uh, I think that covers everything for geometric optics, or at least everything big. Let's see. What, I'm just double checking what I missed. <laughs> um, and so spherical mirrors, um, yeah, you should know the mirror formula in the sense of if you have a mirror of radius curvature r, the focal length is r over 2. Like, you should know that basic stuff. Um, but otherwise, um, the eye, camera, magnifier, these are essentially covered under what we talked about here. They are all applications of this. So uh, one thing that you can uh, kind of rest easy is that I wouldn't ask you to memorize a huge number of details about any of these specific arrangement. Like I wouldn't um, expect you to memorize details about the microscope arrangement. Telescope maybe, eh. yeah, telescope you did it in lab, so you should know the basic arrangement of telescope. Um, simple magnifier, it's basic, so you should know it. The details of camera, uh, I wouldn't expect you to have them memorized. With the eye, the most is I would expect you to know what the, uh, the, what the words stand for. Retina is the portion of the eye that acts as a screen. Like you should know that. And there's a part of the eye that's called the lens of the eye. Um, beyond that, like if I gave you something that essentially corresponds to the camera, I would give you the details. And what you are being asked to do is to apply this uh, same analysis technique to that particular setup. So what these are useful for is as on examples, not something that you would have to memorize. I'll show you the number of details about. All right, so when we get to optics, really the, um, you know, geometric optics, it's not, you know, as um, detailed as this can be, it's not that hard. It's, uh, it's not that complicated. So what we, co what we cover in optics, and what, I don't know, physics three or physics two covers in optics actually don't change all that much, because there's not that much calculus involved. 